Roxana and welcome to Life of Art. So with me today I have Elena Boyce. She is a photographer and she's been all around the world photographing people, places, things and so she's been in France, Japan, America and now Singapore and yeah I'm really excited to talk to her. So you started off your journey in Japan right? So right. How, how did you start it? So um, in Japan, um, I used to work as a model and uh, I was modeling for a lot of uh, different companies and um, uh, met a lot of uh, interesting international photographers, um, the portrait photographers, and um, they probably passed their passion to me. <laughs> and um, also Japan was a place where um, a lot of cameras were made, um, Nikon, Fuji, uh, Canon. Um, I was able not only to visit this amazing workshops um, by, that were organized by the companies, but also um, beautiful workshops that were organized by the uh, famous um, international photographers as well, who were traveling and spending their time in Japan. Um, um, in Japan, I also started photographing people um, like uh, in a Kibana international organization. I used to work as a historian. And um, in Japan, a friend of mine also, um, he organized an um, uh, international photography club, Tokyo International Photography Club, that I think that it's still there in Tokyo and it's really very popular. Yes. But at that time, um, it was really a cool idea. There were like 20, 30 people getting together um, and uh, we had a theme, we had a place like where we would go to and uh, we had to take photographs and then later on share um you know what we took it was digital yeah cameras so we could always see what um you know photographs we took and we could share these photographs at um the table uh, you know at the cafe yeah. and um it was really interesting and uh, to me it was like probably the first lesson that i learned that um you can be in one place, you can walk the same road, but you will never see um, the same picture. You know, yeah. you will be you will never be able to capture the same moment. Or um, so photography is. Uh, it's like it's, it's like a metaphor of life, kind of. Yeah, that you know, there's the same thing that's happening, but then different people see it from different points of views and different views and. A photograph is like a like proof or like whatever of that. Two people won't take the same photograph, right? Yeah. So no, no, you will never be able to reproduce the same photograph. It's just the it's like that's um, the moment, right? You're yeah. capturing the moment, but at the same time, you will never. You know, my question was like, can we really understand each other, hundred yeah. percent? Because um, if we see everything, you know, from a different point of view. <laughs> How you know it's very difficult to yeah okay know, yeah that see. makes sense. So you started off as a model, right? And then you got into photography. So yes. So did you like stop modeling and like started doing full time, or um, no? It was like it was a part time modeling. Part -time My husband time. had to work, yeah. right? And I had to do something in Japan. So okay, you know, um, it was very popular to start modeling. You know, yeah. because um, in Japan, a lot of, um, I was a European, yeah. so it was uh, very easy to find a job. Okay, yeah. As a so, model. So I guess you had some sort of advantage when, if, like, you wanted to be a photographer and you had an advantage in Japan, because, like, like yeah. you said, cameras were made there, and so there's, it's like a photography hub in that sense, you know? I, I don't know, it's like a, an advantage, it's like... I don't know. It's yeah. um, you know I was do I didn't want to do it to be to, to be a photographer. I never thought about it. Yeah. Right. Um, I just it just happened. It was naturally surprising. very very naturally happened. Yeah, and that's like, great. Yeah. Just you know mm -hmm. we're I am we're inspired by other people by the community and then you got this um, first as a hobby right and then this hobby brought you somewhere else. Yeah. Right? And so, so, yeah, no, go ahead. No, okay. Okay, so then, so you started in Japan and then you moved to France. 
which is like right. so France is like so beautiful I've never actually been there but like in pictures it's so beautiful and so like artistic in general so you could right. also consider that like an art hub as in you know it's really right. beautiful so um I moved to France my husband uh, used to work in Marseille and um we lived in a little beautiful town which was um, it is called Cassines Okay. It's like a paradise on earth with amazing nature, beautiful sea, um, you know, mountains. Yeah. Uh, Picasso used to come to the sea to create. Oh, wow. Um, you know, and a lot of um, famous people were visiting the sea too. Uh, Napoleon would say actually that those who have, see, who have been to Paris but haven't seen the sea have seen nothing. Wow. So it's like so, an underrated place kind of. Yeah, it's a, a, like people don't know about it, but it's yeah. like a, it's a gem. And most of the photographers, when they would come to Casillas, they would always take photos of the beautiful nature, yeah. you know, the mountains, the beautiful um, um, beaches. I think that, you know, the pictures behind me are the yeah. photos of Casillas that I took. Oh, wow, that's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but you know, when I moved to um, to France, it's like you know the universe is working <laughs> there the way, right? Yeah. Always the way. And um, when I moved to France, um, I found my mentor, <laughs> mm -hmm. and this mentor be uh, was Peter Beard, and you can Google him. He's a, one of the uh, most famous American um, phot uh, photographers. Um, he happened to live in Cassis. Um, he, like all his life, he took um, photographs of um, famous people, like portraits, yeah. and also Africa. He loved Africa. So one of the, for instance, um, um, the famous person maybe that you probably know that he photographed was Salvador Dali. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, it's... Um, yeah, that's very honorable. Very creative one, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and um, I was really very lucky that I met this person on my way, this amazing photographer. Mm -hmm. And um, he was able to share with me some stories and um, just share some moments of life with me. So I don't have any big books. He has, he has tons of books that one can find, like beautiful books. I just have this little book. Yeah. <laughs> and I just wanted to show you. So when um, I was in Cassis. He was um, creating collages out of um, the photographs, right? Okay. So, um, you know, you cannot see that in the book, or especially here. Yeah. But um, his studio was um, like a, it's a real art studio. Okay. He would create collages with, um, you know, um, with um, beautiful photographs um, of him. And he would actually. Um, add some uh, blood <laughs> to that oh. and it was like a real it was, blood it's very because real the then, texture yeah. the texture of the blood yeah okay. uh, gave a specific texture to the collage but also had a special meaning you know because sometimes when he was um you know showing how the humans are killing um the nature like you know, yeah, elephants for ivory. Elephants, okay. right, for ivory. Yeah. Um, the uh, crocodiles, the rhinoceroses. Yeah, humans um, kill a lot. Right, and um, so to Peter Beard, um, photography, photography was really a tool. Yeah. A tool to bring awareness of what is really happening in the world, because we sometimes don't know. You know, we live yeah. in different countries. We don't know we don't care what is happening in Africa for instance right in America who cares what is happening in Africa yeah right? and I think it's really but, important that art spreads awareness I mean that's what art like really does it spreads awareness and spreads messages and it's so nice that he's able to do that and you do it too right like you like yeah. so I've spoken to you like I've talked to you before and um you take a lot of pictures in Singapore of um you know like very cultural things people making very ancient Chinese um, art and things like that. And in general, culture is sort of decreasing now. Everyone's moving towards, you know, mass produced and mass made things, which aren't as, like, they're, they're very generic. So you yeah. try and keep that culture intact. 
still right. There. And I will tell about that a little bit later. But in Cassius, Peter Barrett was um, like that per, uh, person who really inspired me. Yeah. Um, you know, showed me that photography can be a tool to bring awareness. And he was constantly, you know, saying, "Well, you have to do this." Yeah. <laughs> you know. So in Cassius, uh, in um, back in France, um, you know, I first day I participated in the Mission Photo. It's uh, like a, a show, a TV show. Um, that uh, was featuring a few like uh, photographers who were kind of competing. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like a little competition, competition competing with each other. And um, um, I was the winner. I got the first prize in Mission Porter. And then um, I also was um, kind of invited by the mayor of Cassis to create um, um, an exhibition, exhibition of portraits of Cassidens, of those people who lived in Cassis. So I um, had a huge exhibition, yeah. I had a book, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was just kind of trying to show the life of all the um, people in Cassis, yeah. the fishermen, right? Nice. Um, so you photograph a lot of people, right? More than right. things? Right, mostly people, yeah. Yeah? Mostly. So, you know, the sculptures, the vineyards right and yeah. the owners of the vineyards um and then little you know the different um this is a jute nice. it's a festival right different festivals and yeah. um you know the priest the local priest and kind of every single picture um has a meaning like you know here's a priest right yeah. but uh, he the service is outside. Usually, it's in the church, but yeah. this is outside. It has, you know, wow. and then you have this, um, like, uh, but to me, it was like, oh my God! It's like he's talking to God, and he's a tool, you know, <laughs> to talk to God. <laughs> that, God can sense. listen yeah. to him. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, more festivals. So, this was all about one beautiful. Um, and then this is, for instance, the place where Picasso used to work. And okay. now they're making pottery there. So it's all, so, cause it, this is all in Cassis. And it's you all took... in that town. And, wow. you know, there's a lot of amazing things happening there. Yeah. Um, like the Dance Provencal. <laughs> okay. So you took a lot of pictures of those. And right. Just, um, they're really beautiful. Yeah. So. And Cassis also had um, amazing possibility to see that every single trade was kind of always um, uh, passed, you know, they oh, passed yeah, yeah. from the father to the son. So everywhere you will see see the old guy, the old, you know, man yeah, the, with yeah. his sons, or. Um, I'll just show you one more. I mean, that's how you keep anything um, alive, right? For many generations. Right. And you can see that <laughs> that's how it was. It was passed from one um, uh, generation to another. And um, there was no even question that it's not passed because every single trade, even these du chevaux, this yeah. is the car, the old traditional car. They still make them in Cassis and they can re uh, like re uh, remake them yeah. and um, re yeah, refurbish them. But it's, um, you can see also the father and the son. And although the, fa the son wasn't really interested in these cars, but because his father was doing that all his life, he had, it was his um, yeah. responsibility to take over. And all those, these douchevos are, they don't have AC, but they're yeah. still kind of, it's like a heritage of France and people still like to have them to, you know, yeah. there's okay. special like clubs that, uh, um that use them so that, that that was all about cassis so in my mind you know i always saw that you know the fact that one generation can pass needs to pass yeah. the knowledge to another generation in order for the trade to keep to, to keep the trade alive that's so nice and then after that you went to america where in america no, um virginia beach Okay. And in Virginia Beach, I continued to um, do photography. I used to have my own studio. I always wanted to have um, a portrait studio. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's something that um, is very, you know, kind of cool to have in America. And um, frankly, I realized that I did, didn't like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> because when money is involved and, um, you know, a lot of, you have a lot of schedules and a yeah. lot of shoots and you, it kills your creativity to it's, the point it's very when busy, you, yeah. you, to the point when you don't want to do anything with photography. Uh, okay. So is that why you moved? <laughs> no, we moved because of my husband. Uh, we okay. moved, um, maybe for six months I was enjoying the beauty of Singapore. Yeah. And then COVID hit. So <laughs> and then, then yeah. exactly COVID hit. Did um, COVID restrict so, you because you need to like go to places, right, to take photography? So did COVID right. stop that? So to me, I was, um, um, I immediately kind of jumped to help the Amer American Women's Station magazine and I worked as a photographer there. Um, um, it was um, the possibility kind of to see people as well and to find some friends yeah. and one of my friends um new friends the writer that i met in um, that magazine lena sharp she actually told me you have to continue to do some photography i told her well i you know i just How? left america i had yeah. at least almost 20 years of photography yeah. <laughs> i don't think that i want to continue it yeah and she's like no you have to you know to use it. your tools yes and um uh, she, her idea was to um for me to see some um, heritage traits yeah. she said that well probably you want to connect to the heritage traits we have some amazing heritage traits in singapore i looked at the um um and i w when i looked um at you know some notes you know yeah. and uh, found some people and uh, organized some interviews mm -hmm. um i really thought that uh, this is where i want to spend maybe two two years of my life like where i yeah. really want to which photographs i really want to take the portraits yeah. of those people who were connected to the traits and the it's all about traits. exploring as well right like seeing because if you've been in so many countries, each country's um, culture would be a lot different, right? It would be so cool right. to like live, like going on vacation is different, but like living in different places and finding out how people are there. That's, that, that, that's really nice. And yeah, so like you had told me that you um, like to take pictures of people who were, who, you know, you'd go somewhere and you'd learn how to make their craft and then you'd f photograph them. So could you tell me more about that? Um, so to me, um, I usually take, um, um I usually make, a, first, um, I make, um, um, like you reach out to people first. Yeah. I need to have like an, um, a special scheduled meeting with the yeah. people. Right. Um, and, um, I need to find first, I need to find that person. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then um, you have a scheduled meeting and sometimes uh, people don't want to schedule any meetings with you. So you have to kind of go ahead and maybe come to the place with, yeah. um, where, with the maker, right? Better so to ask for um, forgiveness than permission. Right. And then you have to come again sometimes and then you have to come again <laughs> and talk. Mm -hmm. um, I was really fortunate uh, maybe because I could... Um, say that I'm an international photographer and I published the books and I had my exhibitions and uh, I'm looking for, I'm working for a project I already had from the very beginning. I had in my head a project that I created was the name of the project and my friend, friend writer, Lena Sharp, helped yeah. me to create, you know, this um, the, beautiful, the you know, booklet all of the information for people what the project is about yeah um so um i was able to kind of give this um, booklet to the makers and say well would you like to participate in this project i'll be so happy to photograph you that's nice um, so i only need just one hour of your time wow and 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 the process of 
them doing whatever art that they do and you photographing it, you kind of like also learn. So that's another way to, that's so nice. I, it's so cool how you get to like meet so many different people and do so many things. <laughs> And people are usually very kind, like yeah. they want to be heard. There is always a message okay. that people have. So they always can send a message. Uh -huh. And um, the message that I got from the heritage makers was um, a little bit sad. You know, um, they first, um, th that's why I remembered immediately about the tool that Peter Beard was teaching, right? Yeah. That the photography is uh, uh, the way to bring the awareness. It's important uh, for the photographer to make a statement. Yeah. Right? Why, why are you doing that all? And the first, um, probably can find it, the first person I uh, met was the lantern make maker oh, yeah. from um, the second I'll try to find the okay okay the lantern maker okay so his what when I so you can see this temple yeah, yeah. with the beautiful lanterns yeah lanterns right and um so his i didn't meet him in the beginning it was his wife yeah um that um, i met and uh, she told me that he was sick he doesn't make oh. he wasn't making any in the lanterns and although he had all these beautiful you know workshop um, yeah. they were still making the paper effigies there um, that, um, you know, he is not able to make any lanterns, he is sick. Um, yeah. And um, probably because of the time that he spent making the lanterns all his life, you know, his back doesn't... His back would, yeah. Was, uh, ...was hurt. And um, I had to, um, I was kind of free, I was like, well, do you have any, do you have a son, right? Like in France, uh, you know, all these heritage... Yeah trades were passed from the father to the son. She said, no, like, is anybody, can anybody else make the lanterns? And she said, no, no. because, uh, you know, nobody wanted to learn. So that was yeah. like the beginning of the little story. And, and then uh, I had, after that, I just probably created a list of all the makers that I could find in Singapore yeah. that were still, uh, like, I could find them on the internet. And I was going from one to another listening to um, their, story their and stories and they, one is like this is for instance the last lion dance maker oh, wow. you know, yeah. henry and g and uh, usually i was when i take a photograph i really want to see the whole picture like you uh -huh. step into the photograph you feel yeah. the feeling of the place right yeah uh so how everything is made for instance right um how the lion head is made you use the bamboo and you use the um, yeah, yeah like everything that's used to make the thing yes and you um what really are you using right mm -hmm. so uh, all the tools that you're making you have to dry you know the head you have to um you know a lot of t like the, it's very very time consuming because yeah. you have to um dry for a certain period of time and then put the lacquer on and then dry for a little bit more and then paint and again dry it's, it's a lot so of it's work a, it's a very long process so yeah and then um henry for instance was sharing with me how difficult it is to continue to do his projects to mm -hmm. continue to work on this um um you know on his passion or his mastery yeah. because um because of like financial reasons and, and as you well, start getting older it becomes a lot more difficult to do and, and it's very like meticulous and like little that it's a, a lot of attention that you, okay. yes but it's also um who's going to buy it right yeah. so right now you have chinese people that are coming um you you, you, you have so many stuff from china you yeah. know that is coming that is less expensive yeah 
So why because, would you like uh, why would so you buy or... something for thousand five hundred dollars or eight hundred even eight hundred dollars if you can buy it for three hundred dollars, right? Yeah. So it's again the mass producing and things like that just make it a lot cheaper. So. It's very cheap, right? And then but then who is going to um uh, but 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 then there is another thing that even if you buy something from, that is mass produced in China um, for three hundred dollars, this stuff gets um, you know it's sometimes not very good quality and it yeah. um, gets broken. Who's going to um, repair it? Yeah, th are you going to throw it away, yeah. or are you going to repair it? And then when you are attached to the thing, right? It's my thing. I want to repair it. I want to have it, especially like something like lion heads yeah. or dancing. You want to repair it, so you. Where do you go? You still go yeah. to the same maker who is making it, right? So it's, it is a very, yeah. yeah. So my um, talk with Henry uh, was like, oh, do you have a son? Do you have, you know, somebody Someone who can, you can carry on the legacy type of thing? Right, can, uh, you, you can pass your knowledge to, because this, his story was also amazing. He yeah. started to make this when he was 16. Wow. You know, okay. when you talk about the mastery, you need to have 10,000 hours of, oh yeah the 10, yeah 10,000 hour, hours that you have to spend to doing that particular thing in order to become a practitioner yeah to become a master you need to have probably another 10,000 hours right exactly yeah and then in and uh, like after that you can start to experience and then you can kind of really become, become a master when you Master yeah. when you can experience with things and you can produce something new. Okay. So, um, so for, and I, my question was like, so, okay, you started when you were 16 and uh, he said, and um, do you have your son who's going to continue the trade? And he said, no, my son is in IT. Yeah. And when you kind of, and then, um, you know, I met another maker and another maker and another maker. And you maker, realized that it's like a similar And I realized problem. the story is yeah the stories are different but they're also the same yeah there no continuation for that and uh, what i'm doing is like okay for me in the beginning it was like i want to bring awareness i want to meet the heritage board and i want yeah. to tell them <laughs> oh heritage board knows <laughs> that yeah, there are so many board. makers they know about the makers but there's but not they, much you can do when yeah. like things are so much more easily available and cheaper. You need people to buy it, so. Right, yeah. so you don't need, and to me it was like, okay, then I'm just taking photographs and I'm, um, maybe it will be history. Maybe I'm just like putting it as a story or. But you're doing what you can to spread awareness about it. Say a thousand people view your photograph, at least a couple would go and, you know, get those kind of things. And it's so beautiful that you, uh, your photographs are beautiful, firstly, and also that you specifically take photographs of these kind of things to preserve her heritage. That's so nice. Right. Yeah, and thank you for. But uh, the stories are the same. So when um, you know it will be vanished, it, and the problem is that point, yeah. what remember like we were talking with you before the interview. Um, what will like. Yes, the new generation, they don't really appreciate anything that yeah. is great for such a long time, you know, with hands. But then what will really happen? Yeah. You, know, you know, we were um, becoming that way, the way to, be, to create for a long, long time. So from being hunters and gatherers, right? We were gathering the hunting for the animals, gathering for the... Um, uh, food like six million years ago yeah and we were becoming humans right and the work we always say the work made a human right so we yeah. have to labor made humans us to reach what we are so what it will happen to us i think it's a very important uh, message that you're spreading so so i uh, also photographed the um a lady um, lady who's doing the beaded shoes for instance yeah. right so his um, and this is also beautiful art and a beautiful um craft as well uh, and she told me that um you know like this 
uh, embroidery with beads is actually it's like a meditation. Yeah, it's it gives her the possibility to um, kind of empty the head. And that's what I did. I had, um, I took a few classes, workshops for yeah. embro uh, like to, to, to do some beaded embroidery. But Frank, it was really beautiful and it's really like a meditation. It's really clear as you had, you can sleep better. <laughs> that, that's for sure. But uh, it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I probably made like two inch oh, yeah. embroidery in three hours. <laughs> it took me three hours or two hours to wow. really. So oh you God. really start to appreciate the mastery of those people who can yeah. do it much faster. And perfectly um, as well. Yeah. yeah, and protect it. I don't know how you can protect it though. But like, I, I mean, you first need to spread awareness, then only can you protect it. So right. Yeah. But I also met a few people that started their craftsmanship when they were also like twenty-five from zero. So they didn't have anybody in their family. Family who, for instance, knew how to make the lanterns, and through the trials and errors. Um, they were able to recreate it yeah. but mostly um, those are the people who work um, for the temples yeah you know Chinese temples or I, I found amazing door god maker you oh, know, yeah. you, I, I'm, I found those um, makers that people probably don't know that they still exist like puppet maker yeah um, and um, yeah but unfortunately most of them are either um, old and it's like the last years of their lives and they will say well I, we can do whatever we can do until but, the end but no one can like continue the tradition it's sad yeah. and um, during my um, even during my wait a second, I'll just show you the joystick maker oh, yeah, because there, there is um, there is a joystick make there were beautiful joystick makers in uh, moment here yeah. wow yeah so um yeah you had it here in in um singapore and um it was giant joysticks that were made here in singapore and uh um taeguang heng mm -hmm. yeah, that was the num name of the company um, they just closed a few months ago. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, yeah that was sad. And um, I know that a lot of Singaporeans, I, I, we kind of had a chat, like heritage chat, and um, a lot of Singaporeans tried to help um, Mr. Tay, and um, they were um, trying to kind of also bring awareness that this is happening right now. But he worked, like, there were like three generations of, so, yeah. you know, that worked there. And then, yeah, to close because that's it. And he said, I cannot do it anymore. It's too much, just too much. Yeah, at least though, like heritage um, is being, like not everything is going away, you know, there's still parts of heritage and culture, like traditions, things like that, that are still there. So culture is not gonna, you know, completely vanish. But I think it's really important that we keep spreading all of this and keep, you know, talking about it and taking photographs of it and, everything yeah that. but my fear is that you know it takes again ten thousand hours hours yeah. to become uh, to pr to become practitioner real practitioner and then ten thousand hours to become a master no one um, no one can spend that so, much time i mean um but then you also need the knowledge right so to become that lantern maker uh, by yourself it takes maybe three times more time you know if other than if you just have somebody like yeah. I had my photography mentor and maybe in two days he could give me as many lessons as yeah. I needed you know mm -hmm. that you know I was otherwise I was I would be trying to get the courses and maybe years of my education but um, you know you need to have that mentor you need you to do, have yeah. to, you know usually that family was a mentorship and um, so how if we will lose that we, we don't know how to make stuff, how to make the clay the real way for this yeah. just mix, how to work with the clay. So what will happen? We just lose um, that. Indeed, yeah. 
so thank you so much for doing this and thank you so much for sharing your story and your journey from the modeling from your modeling years to the photography years thank you so much for this yes you're very welcome Sam. it was so nice talking yeah. to you and i think you should continue doing this because it's really really beautiful yeah i'm <laughs> i'm almost done with my this uh, project i almost kind of oh, okay cool that's so nice so thank you yeah. so much for um, talking with me and thank you for watching. I hope that the audience really likes this and yeah, I hope you've learned something and see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.